In August 1982, at 1.15 p.m. on a sunny day, a young woman was walking in the Volgata region of Russia and had an experience that would change her life forever. El Smirnova was walking towards the edge of a forest and about to enter a large clearing when she suddenly heard a loud voice in Russian say, Come closer. Do not be afraid. The equipment is switched off. At first she believed it was some kind of sporting event taking place in the forest. As she came closer to the clearing, she spotted an unusual craft about 20 steps from her. Three man-like entities were standing nearby a disc-shaped object. Smirnova described the craft as being very shiny, reflecting the sun's rays on its surface. Next, a semicircular shaped door opened, and a ladder with 11 steps fell towards the ground. Over the door she saw what appeared to be drawings with animals and plants depicted on them. One of the men was wearing a bronze colored overall and was tall, white skinned, with dark eyebrows and gray eyes. The being was smiling, friendly at her. She believed he was the commander of the spacecraft. Two other humanoids stepped out as well and they resembled Japanese males. The white-skinned humanoid turned towards the other two aliens and said, I can see. Both aliens then immediately walked towards the craft. One stood by the other, and one sat underneath the ladder. As the alien leader stared at Smirnova, Smirnova felt her heart racing felt tired and had weakness in her legs. She suddenly became scared and begged the alien leader not to hypnotize her. She even asked if they were American or Japanese individuals. The alien commander smiled and said in a Baltic accent, well, I won't do that. My name is Alakin. We are from a nearby star system. We came here to rest and have time to converse. But don't try and run away. We are capable of hurting you. We want to talk to you. Smirnova then asked the aliens why they had picked that exact location. The alien leader said that their detector had been scanning the area and found the, found the presence of atomic weapons and radioactivity in the, in the area. Somewhat amazed, Smirnova tried to convince the alien that there wasn't anything in the area of interest. The area settlements were empty as its citizens had moved to the larger cities. He then pointed his hand southeast and told her that there was an underground bunker about three kilometers away. The leader took a round of the device from a black bag with a beige-colored clock dial and pressed some buttons. Next, a luminous screen became visible, and the witness could see parts of her body in three different projections. She could see her brain with green luminous spots and red spots as well. The commander said, we will talk to you. You have a good memory. You don't smoke or drink alcohol. Amazed they knew that, Smirnova confirmed it was indeed true. The alien then began asking questions about how the humans understood things like water, fire, the sky, and the earth. The leader asked her, if she knew the meaning of the universe, and if she also believed in God. He asked what her religious affiliation was, 
and also asked if she read the Bible. The entity also asked if she understood her place on Earth and if scientists knew about the origin of life. All answers that Smirnov gave were then recorded in some, some type of device. Next, the alien commander began to speak and showed her a map of planet Earth and how it was in ancient times. He also showed a more recent map that displayed the earth with shaded areas displaying rivers, lakes, and golden cities that were noted by pink triangles. Blue circles outlined the areas where three elements had not yet been discovered by humans. The leader said that the aliens used those elements for energy. Smirnova asked the aliens why the islands on the map were painted over in black, and the commander told her that before the year 2050, Earth will be severely damaged by earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, droughts, tornadoes, and other events. Some islands would disappear due to earthquakes. He states that in the Atlantic, a ridge would rise in the middle of the ocean and some of the waters would pour into the Arctic and Indian Oceans. As such, many cities on the coast would be flooded. The alien commander pointed out that the Earth was very young, but it was being settled and civilized at an amazing speed, something that they did not expect. The uneven location of the cities on Earth was dangerous according to the leader, and could cause the Earth to fall out of its orbit. Besides circling the Sun, the Earth also made loop movements that led some superfluous changes on the Earth. The alien leader said that Earth had suffered two basic disasters during its existence. The first being that the poles had changed their places, and the second being the orbit had also changed. In ancient times, Earth had been settled by dwellers from five different star systems, according to climatic conditions. He said the first humans had appeared in the African continent near the River Nile. Human settlements then arose along the Nile River. The residents became knowledgeable about the measurement of time, and their calculation was according to the position of the star Sirius. The alien leader mentioned that the pyramids and explained that their existence was watched and supervised by extraterrestrial beings. He noted that the layer between the limestone rocks consisted of ionized alkali soil elements which created using an intensified ionized environment. And it was dangerous for humans to be exposed to the pyramids for a long time. The alien leader also added that the planet Earth was unique and they also visited other star systems as well. The leader said that there were 11 planets in the solar system. He mentioned that there were many moon-like planets in the universe. The aliens had apparently installations on the dark side of our moon. The planet that they were from was about 1.5 times older than the Earth and was smaller. Their planet was slightly indented and dominated by sedimentary rocks. There were no tall buildings. All settlements were the same height. There was also no surface transportation, and all travel was done by air. This was done in an attempt not to damage the planet. They called their planet Sunny, or G Gelos. They called the planet Earth Gaia. He said the surface of their planet is about 40 million square kilometers, and they had a population of about 
200 million. Video images of the alien planet were shown to the witness. There were no skyscrapers, not even tall buildings. All structures in the towns were semicircle or horseshoe shaped, like amphitheaters. All industrial plants were located far from living areas in order to maintain ecological the most popular colors were pink, green, and blue. While seeing this video, Smirnov asked questions and found out that there was one ruler on their planet. The aliens had no problems with food and were able to produce tons of albumin. There were illnesses that did exist, and the family unit was created on the basis of love. The aliens made the majority of their journeys to Earth every four years, and the leader mentioned some kind of inter interstellar channel between our two, two star systems, and it was most suitable to use every four years. He stated there were other planets with atmospheres similar to Earth where life thrived. The alien also added that they had both piloted and remote controlled UFOs of different shapes which were surrounded by a plasma field which could display different shapes. Some remote vehicles they launched are controlled from stations on the moon. The witness then told the alien commander that she was a Christian and worshipped Jesus Christ. The alien answered that Jesus was the man and mentioned three religious guidelines which were necessary at the beginning. Next, the alien commander proposed to the witness about an invention in the area of biosynthetic albumin, which could spread on Earth. But she refused, saying that people would not understand her and not believe her. The people of Earth were very skeptical about visitations from other planets. The aliens then told the witness that they would, would return in four years and find her regardless of where she moved to. In 1986, 1990, and 1994, Smirnova would encounter a UFO again, but didn't see the aliens.